Some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Well, hello and welcome back to the channel, everybody. In today's video, we find ourselves in a Michigan courtroom where a softard is going pro se, and well, he at least tries to act like a lawyer, but he fails on so many levels. It is quite humorous to behold. So let's go ahead and sit back, relax, and enjoy watching this softard fail on so many levels. Good morning. We are on the record in the 53rd Circuit Court for the County of Sheboygan, and we are providing public access uh, both in the courtroom and also online. And our first uh, case on the morning docket is uh, People of the State of Michigan versus Trevor McLeod, file 23 6748 FH. Good morning, Mr. McLeod. And uh, still your intention to represent yourself in this matter? That's correct. Okay. All right, and good um, morning, Mr. Juliet. And Mr. McLeod, this is scheduled for uh, <clears throat> for a docket call, but also you you filed a motion to uh, reconsider the court's denial of the motion to suppress. I've reviewed your motion. Go ahead and say anything further that you wish to in support. I mean, I think it's pretty well laid out in my motion to reconsider. Um, Thank you, Mr. Juliet. People have a position. No. All right, well, Mr. McLeod, I mean, you, your, uh, <clears throat> your motion to reconsider is uh, that, that, that this court uh, doesn't have the authority to interpret the consent decree and, and that, he does, that you don't have to announce your status as a tribal member to be in our officers in order to be protected by the provisions of the consent decree. Um, I mean, I'm, actually, I'm assuming that, the, that those statements that you make are, are true, you know, but... Um, but it's my opinion that that doesn't change the uh, the ruling in this case, because if you were charged with uh, with some kind of boat registration violation or something, which I was, th those those may well be. Well, but that's not the violation that's in front of me. But that's the initial violation for the whole reason why I'm here. Right, right. But which, if, which if, if you were if you were charged with that, this might well present a defense. But what I'm saying is that doesn't invalidate the officers having contact with you because they have no idea who's who out there. Right. So to accept your argument means that they that they just don't get to just that the tribal members could just go around and they, they don't even get to get stopped. Which is a defense that some soft try to use to get out of paying any tickets or anything like that. Uh, oh, I'm a member of this or that tribe. Uh, no, dude, if you're still traveling the uh, public roadways or uh, waterways in the United States, you still have to abide by the laws just because you're a member of one of the 500 or so uh, recognized tribes in the United States doesn't mean you're disqualified from the laws of this country, especially if you commit said violations off the recognized reservation of your tribe. I mean, come on now, dude. Think about this kind of thing. When the police don't even know who they are. Well, I think this is because they're supposed to be trained to, to ask for tribal or not. Well, and in fact, in the consent decree, um, for them to even be qualified to to handle or deal with tribal members, they're supposed to have uh, cultural sensitivity training. And I can tell you right now that I've called my tribe and they're not on any list that's um, supposed to, that has had that training. So they're, they're not even qualified to approach or ticket or do anything with tribal members until they complete that training and they've never done it. So, well, the the, uh, the testimony was that the officer, <clears throat> upon immediate immediately upon initial contact, um, did uh, detect uh, indications of impairment, and then uh, right. But I also proved that he perjured himself. Oh, you were able to prove that uh, it was a uh, perjury. How were you able to do that? Because the judge is about to bury your pathetic little argument. Right here on that front, which means his testimony is junk. Right. So, so based upon based upon his testimony, um, the stop was good. The investigation was good, and uh, the motion for reconsideration is denied. <laughs> so, <clears throat> what that does, um, uh, sir, I don't even know who you are, but you got to stop interrupting the process. Right? I'm sorry. Okay. 
You can observe, but you can't participate. You understand there's a difference there. <clears throat> All right, so Mr. McLeod, then um, <clears throat> you previously stated that uh, it was your intention to file a, an application to appeal the Court of Appeals, or are you still seeking? Well, to... currently, what's going on is I'm filing a criminal complaint against these officers and probably a civil complaint. So I'm, I'm going to make a move to stay the court, motion to stay the court for a bit while I uh, get these complaints going and get them to the right authorities. Well, I'm not going to do that. I mean, it's one thing, you know, sometimes when people are appealing a ruling, that's different, but you're saying you want to pursue criminal or civil remedies against the officers. I don't even know what those would be, uh, but I'm not going to stay, stay in this case for that. Oh, soft heart, you're just not doing so great here. Maybe you should reconsider going pro se and get an actual lawyer who knows what the hell they are doing. But then again, you don't have the brains to even figure that out for yourself. Well, there, I'm also, I've also got five more motions that I've already written that I'm returning to, so I need some time to sort this out. Well, when, when are you going to file this? I'll file one today, but you know. Well, here's the deal. Like, 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 you should file all the motions you want me to hear, and then I can hear them. And then if they resolve the case great, if they don't, then we'll set it for a jury trial. What we shouldn't ought to do is just kind of trickle them out and trickle them out so this case lasts, you know, two years or something. Um, so, so what I was thinking I could do today is give you a, tr a jury trial. Thing. But if you've got some more motions to file, I'll... I'll Put it out for another docket call, but that'll be a motion cutoff, meaning that any any arguments you got about this case, file them all, and we'll hear them all. Does that, I mean, does that make sense? I guess so. Okay. Oh, come on now, soft heart. Did you actually think that this delaying tactic would actually work on a well-experienced judge? I mean, you can't be that freaking stupid. Oh, wait, never mind. You're a sovereign citizen, and generally sovereign citizens believe that they know more about the law than any lawyer or judge who has actually studied the law for most of their lives. So yet another fail on your part. Uh, so you might want to reconsider your uh, tactics here and actually go for a lawyer. But nah, that might not help you, because odds are... That lawyer wouldn't want to listen to your BS anyway and walk away from the case before it even started. So let's um, pick a date for that. Um, <clears throat> what about April 23rd? That's in about five weeks. That should give you plenty of time to get the motion signed. Yeah, that's right. Okay. All right. So let's schedule this then for a docket call. And that'll also serve as a motion cutoff for April 23rd at 9 a.m. I'd like to have uh, <coughs> Officer Leeson, Feltz, and Beelman present for questioning. Sorry, what? Could I have Officer Leeson, Feltz, and Officer Beelman present for questioning? Today? Well, it depends on what motion you file. <coughs> It's going to have to do with their testimony. Okay, so if you file a motion that requires the testimony of the officers, then how that generally works is on the when you file the written motion, then the prosecutors, you know, on notice that in order to respond to that motion, they have to uh, bring the officers to testify. Um, what, what, what motion do you think you're going to file that requires their testimony? You know? Well, I, I'm going to. Um, so in Mr. Leistenfeld's report, which you probably have in front of me. I don't. <clears throat> I only get what you guys give me during motions. So I submitted it all. It's all on the clerk's file. Oh. Uh, but he, he states in his, in his statement that once the warrant was signed, that I gave him my blood without cause. But in my documents, I've got an unsigned warrant. It was never signed. So his testimony will be impeached also. They're both lying. Okay, so you're, so you're going to file a motion to suppress the, is there a blood test? 
blood test. Okay, and that would require the officer's testimony. So, all right. So yes, if you file a motion like that, Mr. Julia will bring the officers. Okay. Otherwise, he would probably lose the motion because it's his burden to come forward with that evidence. Then. All right. All right. Anything further today, then, Mr. Oh, good enough. Okay, we'll see you April twenty third at night. All right. And this, boys and girls, is why you definitely need a lawyer when you are in a trial because you see how much that this softard was stumbling through this whole process. I mean, he's trying to do something that a lawyer trains years to do. But apparently this softard must believe that he uh, has law experience and courtroom experience way above any lawyer that could help him out. Well, dude, good luck with that. You're going to need it when you get your ass handed to you at your trial. So at any rate, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next one. Dude, so there's no way I can get in, bro? Come on, I'll put you on my YouTube. But shut up, Wesley. You gotta put signs up, ma'am, if it's- Are you Glenn Serio? Who's that?